Hey, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a second. So if I can ask you to take your seats and close your mouths. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, can, you can chat amongst yourself for a few more seconds, but we are going to get started. Uh, it's an exciting day for us as we kick off this Move Maricopa challenge. Uh, we know that Glendale did fairly well last year, but we can do better. So we're looking to do better this year. Uh, it was won by the West Valley last year, correct, Allie? So Buckeye, well done. Uh, you're our target for this year. We're marching after you. We're going to move more than you. Um, I want to do some welcomes here. So I have, I have some notes that are taken. I'm going to read from these notes. So I want to welcome the cities of Glendale, of course, Goodyear, Chandler, Buckeye, Peoria, Surprise, and Scottsdale, the town of Gilbert, Tempe School District, and the Mesa School District. Uh, we're glad that you're with us either remotely or here in person. Uh, we hope you enjoy what we have for you today. And with that, I want to do an introduction. So Chris Powell is widely known as the transformation specialist and host of ABC's hit documentary style series, Extreme Weight Loss. He is a two-time New York Times bestselling author and appears regularly on nationally syndicated television shows, including Good Morning America and The Doctors. Chris was born in Mesa, Arizona, and after moving around during childhood, returned to the Valley to attend ISU and earn a degree in exercise science with concentrations in biomechanics and physiology. It's hard for me to even say those words, much less study them. In response to the devastation brought on by COVID, the COVID pandemic, Chris developed Move One Million, a nonprofit intended to bring movement and mindfulness to the world. Move One Million was launched right here in Arizona and through partnerships with organizations like the Arizona Cardinals, Maricopa County Department of Public Health, Cigna, Phoenix Children's Hospital, and many local municipalities and nonprofits. He has taken off across the globe and is now being done by over 100,000 people daily in 76 countries. And we're going to hear a little bit about that this morning, but now I'll introduce Mr. Chris Powell. Come on out, sir. Wow. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing? Let's try that one more time. How are you guys doing? Okay, that's a lot better. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. And uh, here's the thing. How many of you were actually part of Move at Maricopa last year? Oh, my gosh. How many people weren't part of Move at Maricopa last year? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, anytime that they invite me to the party, it comes with a little twist because I have to make everybody move. So you guys ready to move? Yeah. Let's try that one more time. Are you guys ready to move? Yeah. Okay, it's definitely going to bring the energy up in here, so we're going to have some fun. At this time, I would love for everybody to be on your feet. Create just a little bit of space between you and your neighbor. Just a little, there you go. So extend those arms out. There you go, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys through just 13 movements, and I wanna see if you can follow along with me, all right? And I promise you, we can do it all standing. They're very simple movements. It's not gonna be too crazy, but it's gonna be a total warm up from the top all the way down. So let me see if you guys can follow along with me here really quick. Let's just do a nice slow head roll to the right. Feels good, doesn't it? Anyone get a little snap, crackle, pop in there? Couple. Now to the left. More snap, crackle, pop. Okay, here we go. Eyes up on me. Again, watch out for your neighbor. Let me see if you can do this. Arms out and up to a Y. Nice. Now in circle to an X. Good job. One more time now. Out to a Y. There you go. Now in to an X. See, now everyone's smiling. Now you guys are going to smile even more because we're going to do a little hug stretch here. There you go. Give yourself a big old hug. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, now from here, how many of you guys know the song that goes head, shoulders, knees and toes? Knee yes, okay, so if you can do that, let's do this one. We're going to go sky, thighs, toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. One more time now, here we go. Sky, thighs, toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. Good job. Now everyone, drop it all the way down and slowly roll it up one vertebrae at a time. Ah, shrug those shoulders. I saw you shrug those shoulders. It feels good, right? Shake it out. From here, we're going to twist up to the right, then down to the left. There you go. Twist your body as much as you can. Good. And then up to the right, down to the left. Again, watch out for your neighbors. And then back to center. Other side now. Up to the left now, down to the right. Good. Up to the left, down to the right. We got two more here. And 
Last one, back to center. Now just march it. Drive those knees up high, swing those arms. Allie knows this one. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, from here, can, everyone, can you pat your head and rub your stomach? Did I get anybody? All right, okay, so if, if you can do that, it's just a coordination exercise. If you can do that, can you do this? Be careful also, because we've got chairs behind you. See if you can step and just kind of raise your knee up high. It's supposed to be a kickback, but if you can, just raise your knee. There you go, good. Just getting the arms and legs moving together, that's it. Get all that blood pumping. Excellent. Now from here, we're gonna do something called a superhero stretch. It goes like this, big superhero stretch. We're gonna take it down the center, and then we go like this. Which superhero does this? Th thank you, it's the craziest thing. Whenever I ask this to the kids nowadays, they're like, Hulk, uh, Iron Man. And I was like, no, it's Superman. So it's, yeah, Superman, from here, tighten up every muscle in your upper body, super tight, squeeze it tight. I want you to, and again, be careful, but we're, you know, I know, you, you know this one. <laughs> from here, take a small step forward, and I want you to just punch it forward. Good, back to center, other foot, punch it forward. Back to center, let's take it to the right, squeeze it up. Good, and to the other side, squeeze it up. Excellent, now we'll take it back, a little baby step back. I know there's a chair right there. And then back, good, and then up. Now jog it out. Beautiful. Now freeze, show me your hands. Turn them around, make a fist. Squat down, stand it. We're gonna reach all the way over and stretch down the side. Good, back down to the center. And then up, good, and back to the center. And then up and over, last one. And then up and over, now cross those arms in the front and over the top. Good, we call this a Phoenix squat. There you go. Good, we're gonna do this three more times. And here's two. And last one. Now flex it out, let's see how strong you guys are. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good job, everybody. All right, have a seat. Relax. That was awesome. I mean, you got your heart, the uh, heart rate up just a little bit. You feel it in there? Can you feel it? All right. First of all, great job. That was really good. Y'all were extremely coordinated. Well done. Um, so those were 13 movements. Total body warm up from the top all the way down. But here's the cool thing about it. And those of you who actually saw my virtual presentation last year, I, I, I explained a little bit about this whole process. And I just, I, I love to open with it because first of all, the moment you move your body, it lights up energetically fires up that prefrontal cortex, it puts us in a really good place. Like, who here feels a little bit more energized than when they were first sitting in here, right? All of a sudden there's, yes, thank you. We're getting some oxygen to the brain and the body's ready to go. You're ready to learn, you're ready to focus. But here's the really cool thing about just these 13 movements. It's so much more than just 13 movements. The, don't you hate that? <laughs> And then when, the more you fumble to try to turn it off, the harder it is to actually get it. Um, it's more than just 13 movements. The, the inspiration behind all of this, and, and during the introduction, he, uh, he graciously spoke a little bit about this, but during the pandemic, I just wanna tell you a super quick story, and I promise, I talk a lot, but I, and I, I promise Ali I'm gonna keep it to 30 minutes here. Um, with everything that was going on, especially, you know, we we're seeing all these reports of, the mental health issues that kids were having in schools. And when we were all quarantined, no one was moving. And the, the, the numbers of anxiety and depression were going through the roof. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about how I could possibly help, how I could serve, and how I could give back. And I spent a lot of time actually up on these buttes in the East Valley. And I, I love to go up there and I just look down on, on the valley and I just think like, man, what, what can I do to help? And I remember one time I was up there and I was, I was looking out on all the lights in the Phoenix metro area, and I know it represents, you know, four and a half million people, and I was just thinking, what could I possibly do to help these people that are suffering? You know, and, and you see all these lights, and you think about what's happening inside of these homes, and everyone's stuck in there, these poor kids, they're not moving, and, and I just, I think about all, all the suffering that's happening in there, and I, and I came up with nothing. <laughs> and so, but, I went down the hill, I walked into my living room, I turned on the TV and I started flipping th through the channels and I saw a documentary on Japan. And this is the coolest thing in the world and it lit me up and I just thought, this is it. So check this out. In 1928 in Japan, Emperor Hirohito 
at his coronation ceremony, he was such a huge believer in movement and the benefit that it could bring his people for lots of different reasons. But he had, he had two big problems that he was trying to solve. In Japan at the time, in 1928, the average, the average adult was living to about 40, 41 years old. He needed his people to live longer, and then on top of that, he needed to bring his people together to unify them as a country. And he was such a huge believer in the power of movement, he, he mandated three and a half minutes of movement at 6.30 in the morning in every school, every factory, every corporation. It was mandatory. And they, they took the, the, the technology from the United States, they took radio, and across the entire country, they learned the exact same 13 movements in three and a half minutes, and the entire country did it together. And they started with these little kids, and they gave them these stamp books, and every single time they did Raggio Taisa, which means radio calisthenics, in the morning, they would get a little stamp in their book. And sure enough, here's the best part about it, it worked. Crazy as it is, it worked. By 1955, Japan ranked the healthiest country in the world. It was a third world country before. These people were dying at 40 years old. The, the life expectancy went from 40, 41 to 55 by 1955, which is a significant jump if you actually understand the statistics and health span. And now it's like 85 or 86. And Japan has actually continued to rank in the top five spots for the last six decades straight. Here's the coolest part. Here we are. This is in 2023. So here we are 95 years later and 27 million Japanese continue to do the same movements, the three and a half minutes of movements every single day. Here's the gift that he ended up giving them. And this is, this is what's so cool about it. And I don't even know if he knew it at the time, but here's a quick example of, of the gift. If I was to start playing the Macarena, what do you do? What's the very first thing you do? Dun, 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 dun. Exactly, <laughs> you, you, you got it. Because music anchors movement into our memory. And the beauty and the, the, it was the simplicity of the program is what made it so powerful. And that's why it was able to scale through generations. It's because it was the same movements done to the same music every time. What if the Macarena was 13 movements that took you through a complete total body warm up? He gave his people the gift, and they could never forget it because he taught them from kids all the way through. He gave them the gift of the very first step of how to warm up your body, how to completely move your body, and the body in motion tends to remain in motion. What an incredible gift that he gave generations. And it's, he did it simply through three and a half minutes of memorized movement. It was beautiful what he did. And I'm watching this documentary, and it was, it was he actually only touched on Raggio Taiso. That was a five minute segment and immediately I started Googling. I went, oh my gosh, it changed a country. This is where we were at the time, you know, depression across the world, 264 million, anxiety, 284 million, the people suffering from, from weight related suffering, obesity, 650 million, and hundreds of millions more unreported. What, what if we could give this gift to everyone who's suffering at the time. And not just then, but now. And that's why it was the perfect time. And I was thinking, what if we created something new? Because the thing is, the movements that they did, they were very dainty movements. It was actually, it was created by like the, the Japanese Dance Society. And, uh, and it was old 1928 piano music. So it was like, ding, 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 ding. And I was thinking, we need something cool now. Like, we need to take it to another level. And because I am a Sun Devil, which is what, uh, they got in, any other Sun Devils here? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And Arizona State, their school of exercise science was actually, it's number two in the nation behind Penn State. Is it, like, they're phenomenal. And with my degree in biomechanics, my specialty in biomechanics, I thought, let's create the ultimate warm up top down where you can remain on your feet, completely scalable, anyone can do it. Let's put it, not to three and a half minutes of music, but let's shorten it down to two and a half minutes because who's got three and a half minutes nowadays? <laughs> and let's create a standardized form of movement to take it to the world. So that's how Move One Million was born. And it's so cool to see how it's taken off. But at this time, now you guys, you all survived the 13 movements that I took you guys through it. Who remembers the first, the first move, what's the first move? Yes, excellent, neck roll, okay. So 
it's test time. I'm going to have everyone back on your feet real quick. Here we go. We're going to do it one more time, but this time we're going to do it to the music. And I want you guys to get the full Move One Million routine experience. So does anyone remember what happens after the neck roll? Yes, I love it. Exactly. We're going to go arms out to a wide. Don't worry. I'm going to guide you guys through this one as well. But you're, you're going to feel it to the music. And again, it's the same music every single time. So let's have some fun with this. Here we go. We're going to start with that slow head roll to the right, followed by a head roll to the left. Here we go. Eyes up on me. Arm circles out to a Y. Good. Now in to an X. There you go. Now out to a Y, then in to an X to the hug stretch here. There you go. And we're going to do this for eight. Yes, watch your neighbors. We got four more here. Three more. Two. Then one, then we go sky thighs, sky thighs, toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. One more time. Sky thighs, toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. Drop it down and slowly roll it up. All right. Then we're going to twist up to the right. We twist up to the right, then down to the left. Good. Up to the right, down to the left. Two more here. And last one, back to center, other side now. Up to the left, then down to the right. Good. Up to the left, down to the right. Two more here. There. Last one, back to center. Now we march it out here. There you go. Drive those knees, swing those arms. We got four more, then three more, then two. Then we're going to move into those kickbacks. Here we go. Just step it out, kick it back. There you go. Just raise the leg, just so you don't kick the seat. We got four. Here's three, two, Last one, big superhero stretch. Get ready, now let's see that Superman. Tighten up those muscles, we step it forward and back. Good job, other side now. There you go, to the right, squeeze it up. Good, to the left. Almost there, we're gonna step it back, pressing overhead. Excellent, last one. Good, jog it out. Okay, just two more moves left. Show me your hands, turn them around, squat and reach. Squat and reach. There you go, one more each side. Last one. Now into Phoenix squats for five. This is the last movement right here. Total body. We got the whole thing moving now. Here's two. Good job, last one. Now flex it out. Yes. Again, give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Awesome. All right. Two rounds of Move One Million down now. Feel better? OK. <laughs> Good. Yes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, speed through this part really quick. But again, I'm already giving you the whole, the whole background behind this and all the benefits. Then what we ended up doing is that we ended up tying the two and a half minutes with two minutes of mindfulness. And initially, and of course, we, we ended up putting this onto a, an app platform just to give it to the world. So it's, it's available for free on the App Store, the Google Play Store, and we wanted to give it to everybody. But where it really took off was in our schools. And I do know there's a couple school districts in here. <laughs> so um, it's been so cool to see how it was received, especially with the kids, not just with, and, and tracing all the way back to the roots of the impact that it made in Japan through the generations. It was so cool to see how it took off, but, and not just with the movement, but the mindfulness now. And that, I, I didn't realize, in fact, at first when, I, when, I, when we started to create the program, I was so excited about the movement aspect of it, but when we actually started doing the mindfulness part of it as well, I didn't know if the kids were actually going to be able to sit still and focus on their breathing and become centered and, and become present and be here and now. And it has blown my mind how it has grown through these school districts. And now, you know, it's really cool because like, like he had mentioned, you know, moving over 100,000 people a day across 76 countries, many of them, most of them children. And it's been so cool as we've been touring. In fact, we just got back from um, Hawaii, the Department of Education in Hawaii flew us out there and they've adopted across all their K through six schools. And it's just, it's incredible to, to, to be in there and take these kids through it. And these kindergartners, first graders, you can hear a pin drop. 
and they're going crazy during the movement, and then all of a sudden, two minutes of mindfulness, and it's dead silent, and their hand is over their heart, and they're focusing on their breathing and bringing their heart rate down and becoming present, and we teach them that this is mindfulness, and it's a tool that you can have for the rest of your life when you find yourself scared or anxious. Anytime that your breathing is fast and your heart rate is high, you can come right back to the present. And it's, it's just been amazing to see how well it's been received. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for joining me in Move One Million. Thank you again for letting me share that with you. Now we got some business to take care of. All right. <laughs> we got that part out of the way. Let's talk Move at Maricopa. Did you guys have a good time last year? All right. Who's representing Buckeye? Anyone here from Buckeye? Good. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Buckeye's going down this year, all right? You're all, you're, you're all Glendale, right? Most of y'all are Glendale. Scottsdale. You got another? What's that? Oh, we got Peoria here. OK, OK. We're cool. Peoria's cool. <laughs> OK. Man, it was insane what y'all did last, last year. That was unbelievable. First of all, I just want to give props to Allie. Allie, thank you so much for putting this all together. As, as many of you know, it's not like, oh, well, let's just do Move at Maricopa. This has been years in the making, and it's slowly grown, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Are you guys ready to make this the biggest year yet? Woo! Let's try that one more time. Are you ready to make it the biggest year yet? OK. Because here, here's the thing now. We can't do it by ourselves. you got to recruit people also, because so much really cool stuff happened last year. And we're, I'm going to talk about, collectively, what everyone did as far as steps go, and I, I hope I don't let the cat out of the bag. I know you and I have spoken about it, because, but I was chatting with a few people, and they said, you're going to be talking about this, but I've got a slide on this as well. Um, here's the thing, and, and we're going to get to the collective steps here pretty soon, and also what we're going to be aiming for this year. But I do want to talk about this, and I touched on it last year as well, but steps. Here's the crazy thing. So I had a show on ABC, Once Upon a Time. Did anyone ever see the show Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition? Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> you kept me employed for a good five years. It was amazing. Um, and you saw these incredible transformations that people did. Here's the craziest thing about it, though, is that the best transformations I've ever seen in my entire life, they were done walking. Movement is medicine and steps. It is the lowest barrier of entry. It's completely free. The human body is made to do it. And holy smokes, I'm a perpetual student, and I, I live on PubMed. And it's so cool to see all of the literature then and now coming out about the benefits of walking. I mean, how many of you are familiar with the, it was a study that just came out like a couple of years ago, and they were talking about the increase of steps, every thousand steps extra that you take, how it significantly decreases. There's a positive correlation with a decrease in all-cause mortality, which means the more steps you take, the longer you live. Are, how many here are familiar with this? It's, a, it's fascinating, and it is they were continued to prove this over and over and over and over again. It's the coolest thing. And they started with an average of 4,000 steps being the baseline. And they found the difference between people doing an average of 4,000 steps a day consistently to 5,000 steps. They saw them live long longer. And then when they went to 6,000 steps, they saw them live longer. And then 7,000 steps, they saw them live longer. We're talking all-cause mortality. So it decreased the risk of everything. Oh, yeah, and then it also slows age-related cognitive decline. It increases bone density. It strengthens all of your lower body muscles. I mean, and the list goes on to improving your mood and mental cognition. And I mean, the, the benefits are widespread. Just, and I only threw this slide up here, just to talk metabolism because I touched on it a little bit last year, but steps, and I just I thought I'd have. It's uh, physiology fun, but I thought... <laughs> I thought it, it is a neat challenge, and the reason I use the word neat is because this right here, this little chart right here, just for those of you who are thinking about your metabolism, right, this amazingly magic word that's like, that ultimately encapsulates all the, uh, the, the energy that your body burns a day. So that's exactly what this chart is. Now, your metabolism can actually be broken down into four different components, and like how many people here 
How many people here would like to have a really high metabolism? Every hand should be up because that's a really good thing. When your metabolism is kicking, when you are burning a lot of calories, it gives you all kinds of control and all kinds of flexibility, especially with the foods that we're consuming, right? It's all about energy balance. So your metabolism can be broken down into four main categories. The first one is going to be your BMR. That stands for your basal metabolic rate. Does anyone here know what the basal meta metabolic rate is? So essentially, if I was to wake up in the morning, I open my eyes and I just laid there for 24 hours. That's my basal metabolic rate. That's the amount of calories that your body will consume. Without moving a muscle, you can't move. You can't eat anything, you can't do anything. Just laying there. So that is, that's a massive number. Most people don't realize it. They think, oh, I wake up, I have to burn calories, I have to go out there and run. Because that's what's gonna get my body to burn calories. No, just you at rest is burning a lot of calories. Now, where do those calories co come from? The amount of muscle mass you have. Every pound of muscle, muscle is extremely expensive. And it's, it's extremely inefficient. It consumes a lot of calories just to maintain itself. So every pound of muscle that you have on your body goes into that. Your heart is a muscle. So that's your heart beating. And also your diaphragm. That's another muscle that has to contract and it pulls down so your lungs can expand. So those, that's essentially your basal metabolic rate. Now, real quick, I'm going to skip over the neat part, and we're going to go right up to the TEF. That's the thermic effect of feeding. So every single time that you consume food, what happens is, and all of a sudden the system starts moving, and you're digesting food. And when you, eat, when you consume protein, for example, protein takes a lot of energy to break down. So your thermic effect of feeding goes up. Believe it or not, protein actually raises your metabolism. You hear, especially like a, a, us in the transformation world, we're like, oh, eat your protein, eat your protein. Yeah, it makes you feel really full, but at the same time, it also takes your body a lot of energy to break it down. So guess what? But during that breakdown process, metabolic rate goes up. Now at the very top, EAT. That's exercise activity thermogenesis. That's the run that you guys are thinking about, or going to the gym and getting a little sweat session on. It's not a very big piece of the pie. In the older charts, it used to be a lot bigger, especially when we thought, oh, that's where you're burning all your calories in the day. Now, granted, if you're an endurance athlete, this is an average, an average American here. If you're an endurance athlete, that, that little slice of the pie can be a little bit bigger. Right now, it, it, it's estimated at about 5%. But the magic of this is that, and this is a relatively newer chart, they're finding that this really cool section that accounts for about 15% of the calories that you burn every day is NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is where steps come in. So next to your basal metabolic rate of just laying in bed all day, if you want to maximize the amount of calories your body's burning every day, steps, increasing your step count can be significantly more powerful than going to the gym and getting a sweat session on. What a relief. <laughs> How awesome is that? You actually don't need to worry about that nearly as much especially if you are on like a weight loss journey or you're just looking at to, for overall health and wellness, steps, steps, steps. It's parking your car further away from the door. It's taking the stairs instead of the, instead of the elevator. It's, all this, it's walking and talking on, on your phone during meetings or during FaceTime calls. It's just, it's as you move. And by the way, that's, that's why they found fidgeters can burn significantly more calories. We're talking hundreds of calories more it's these little movements that you do during the day. Even these little movements. This is actually where the magic is. <laughs> Not <laughs> Stop, you don't have to do that anymore. They're realizing that this is where the magic is. This is it. In fact, that was actually a running joke on our show because I'd spent five years taking people through phenomenal transformations. And it was the funniest thing because when the cameras are rolling, I mean, it was... <laughs> all this and this tears and we're flipping tires and everything and the, and the moment they'd say cut, everyone's like, okay, cool. And they go, okay, back to losing weight now. That, that was the joke, is that weight, weight is lost right here. This is how we transformed everybody for 365 days on the show and everyone's like, oh my gosh, they lost 200 pounds in a year, that's insane. What did you have, what was the workout? Granted, here's the thing, this, doesn't, this isn't sexy on TV, nobody, just, nobody watches this. But that's, literally, that's all we did. It was just a ton of walking, a ton of walking. That's where the magic is. And now we've got this incredible opportunity here with this event 
not just to put in a lot of steps, but I like to think about it as a jump start, just a place to get, to get everyone together, to bring us together as a community, to start moving together as a community, but then to keep moving together as a community. So we got our work cut out for us. Last year, y'all did cumulatively just over a billion steps. I mean, give yourselves a round of applause. That's freaking amazing. And that was across all the cities, correct? Um, that's incredible. So, first of all, yes, that's amazing. But now it, it also, you've got to ask the question, what could we do this year? So here's a little challenge for you. When it comes to goal setting, is anyone here familiar with the 85% rule? Well, it's up there now. So now, now everybody's familiar with it. Um, some really amazing literature has come out about the neuroscience of goal setting. And here's the thing. When you set a goal, it can't be too grandiose and that it's guaranteed, guaranteed to set you up for, fa for failure because that is going to do far more damage than had you set the goal in the first place. It has to be enough to stretch you just a little bit because if it's, and, and they found that the magic number is about 85%, so it's, it's about 10 to 15% beyond what your current ability is of what you're capable of doing. And I'm not saying physically capable, but I'm also saying during your everyday crazy days, I mean, how many people are parents and you got kids, you're kind of running around kids to activities and then you're working your job and you're doing all these other things and you've got a high maintenance spouse or something. And so, but you have to carve it into your day. So it's like, what's, what's something you could do that might be 10 to 15% beyond what you're currently doing? It's a really safe range. It's big enough to elicit, to give you the butterflies a little bit. And we need that. We actually need those butterflies. That, those butterflies, is, that's a, that little bit of dopamine release, where it's gonna, it's gonna trigger motivation. But it's gonna be, you gotta set the bar low enough that you can actually get over it. Because then, after that one win, you can set another goal, and you can keep getting over that bar. It has to be low enough that you can achieve that goal. So, if last year, it was just over a billion steps, and again, this is gonna be, obviously, this is a big group thing. I don't know, what, is it possible to do 1.1 this year? What do you guys say? If you guys did a billion, you guys ready? Let, and I wanna hear it, if, if you're ready, what do you say? Let's, let's, and here's the thing, it's not 15%, it's 10%. But in order to reach that also, it's gonna stretch you a little bit, maybe not necessarily physically. Know your limitations. How many of you know exactly how many steps that you contributed last year? Everyone knows this, right? Because you got your step tracker, right? So if you know what the steps that you did last year, think about what that is and do your own math. Think about what 10% beyond that is so you can contribute to taking your team that much further. But at the same time, I'm going to ask you guys to stretch yourself a little bit further and recruit other people around you. Because the more people that are involved, the more likely you all are to adhere to this and to actually group up and join together and conquer this. So that's gonna be my challenge to you guys. Now, in order to do this, I do wanna talk, oh man, I'm already over. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm gonna keep this, oh man, this is, this is good stuff though. Okay, 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 I, I, my apologies. Um, in order to get there, I just wanna share with you guys something that's, that I have found in 20 years of helping people through the journey of transformation. And it's, one, it's the most powerful lesson that I teach ev everybody before they even start the journey. Because a lot of people come to me because my specialty is the weight, weight loss transformation. And they all, they all wanna know like, how do I help people achieve extraordinary results? Because they've seen what I've been able to do. And it's not in the diet and exercise. In fact, that's the, that's the last thing that we cover. Everybody, and this is the little behind the scenes, Every single time we would start a new season, we would bring in everybody and we would be sitting in an audience just like this and we'd bring 50 people in from across the United States, potential participants to be on our show. And all of them were 300, 400, 500 pounds. I see you nodding. <laughs> we actually have an individual here who was on the show. Rachel Paul, real quick. Yeah. 
Yep. And she knows this grind really well. And the very first thing that I, I would walk in, and I'd be like, say, nice to meet all of you. Um, real quick, you're all here, not because you're 300, 400, 500 pounds, anything like that. You're here because you have no integrity. And you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine the looks I got. I said, hold on, hold on, let me, let me clarify something. Rachel, if you told John that you would meet him at, Tomorrow at, at, uh, for lunch at noon, what time would you be there? 11.57, of course he would. John, if you told Debbie that you'd pick it, her kids up from soccer practice tomorrow and you'd drop them off at her house at 4 o'clock, what would you do? He's like, I'd be there at 3.57. Of course he would. And you'd drop those kids off and they'd be safe. Absolutely. So y'all have integrity with other people, but you're all here because you have no integrity with yourself. And then, but still, you know, people would be kind of looking at me like this. I said, well, let's try something. How many of you have said to yourself, the diet starts Monday? <sighs> no. Or how about tomorrow morning, I'm going to set my alarm for 6 a.m., and I'm going to get a workout in. And I'm going to just do this every single day this week. And then you hit snooze until you got to run to work. Show of hands. <sighs> <laughs> of course. Exactly. It's so easy to have integrity with other people but to not have integrity with the most important person in the world, and that's you. And when I look out at all these amazing, like these incredible people, but they're these broken people, and they're just desperate for hope and for belief in themselves, I don't see hundreds of pounds of extra body fat. It's hundreds of pounds of broken promises. That's, that's the way you see it. And that's the way we have to see it. Because the thing is, they only got there because it, they made a promise and broke it. And they made a promise and broke it. And when you do that, you lose your confidence and you lose your esteem and you lose your belief in yourself. And so in order to get ordinary people to do extraordinary things, and it doesn't matter if it's weight or if it's relationships or if it's finances or whatever it is, wherever you want to go, integrity is everything. It's the, it's the integrity that we have with ourselves. And so if you say, I'm going to walk 5,000 steps today, that's a promise that you're going to make to yourself. And if you walk 4,500 steps, time to do some soul searching. So think about what's a doable number that you can do every single day. Because the thing is, what we're playing with, and a lot of times, most of the, pe most of the time, when people say diet starts Monday, they'll say it, they, the first couple times they'll say it in front of other people. After they've broken that promise to themselves a few times, and they don't realize that they're so disappointed in themselves, they stop saying it in front of the other people. And they just kind of tell it to themselves, all right. They won't say it in front of people because they don't, want to, they don't want to be held accountable to it. We don't want to be held accountable to it. This is a human thing. I'm guilty of it just as much as anybody is, and I always have to keep myself in check. So be careful about making those silent promises because those are still contracts with yourself, and there's so much that's on the line. And so when you realize that the promises that we make are directly linked to our dignity and our integrity and our, and our esteem and our confidence, then you start to protect these promises. And you start to, and you must defend them because you're defending the most important thing in the world and that's your belief in yourself. And if you can believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. And so that's what happens is by the time I'm done speaking with 50 people, from the moment they walk into the room to the moment they walk out, they're not even focusing on losing the weight anymore. All they're focused on is keeping their promises to themselves. And that's when I know I've won as a coach. And for the next 365 days, that's the only conversation we have to have. It's not about the diet and exercise. It is, what are you committing to yourself today? Well, I'm going to do 30 minutes on the treadmill. Fantastic. And how are you going to eat? Well, I'm going to commit to eating this way, and I'm going to commit to putting in this many steps, and I'm going to commit to drinking this much, much water. Now we're talking. And then every single time I check in, I don't have to ask about water or steps or food or anything. Did you keep your promises? Yes, I did. That's how I get people to do extraordinary things. The, the magic is not in the treadmill or in the salad. The magic's in you. And as a coach, I don't have to check in on the treadmill or the salad anymore because those are external solutions. So if you guys want to do something incredible and hit 1.1 billion steps, make a promise. And by the way, what's going to happen? You're going to start to believe in yourself. And over the course of this entire challenge, you're going to build your esteem and your confidence and your belief in yourself. And oh yeah, you'll hit 1.1 also. That part will take care of itself. If you start keeping your promises to yourself and you can point this any direction you want, we can just have some fun with the steps challenge. But if you start keeping your promises to yourself, just look out. 
I'm telling you, your life will change significantly because of how you believe in yourself. And again, if you believe in yourself, there's nothing you can't do. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so I just, I had to get that part out of the way because I can't leave you without that. That's, that's the most important takeaway that you guys can ever get. And, and please, please take it to heart and start checking in with yourself. And if you say you're going to do something, remember, also as a coach, it's my job to scale it down. When someone's like, yeah, let's go. I'm going to run five miles a day and I'm going to do this. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. 15% rule. If you're gonna if you're gonna set a challenge for yourself, I'm still gonna keep you at 10 to 15% because the last thing you want to do is slip back into making a promise you can't keep. That's when the damage is done. So guys, remember we're gambling here, and we're gambling with the most important thing in the world, and that's your belief in yourself. So be careful about it because if you play this game right, the sky's the limit for who you are as a person. That's the best, this, is, this transcends steps. Like this is the opportunity to, to find out how powerful you are. And it's all right in here, it always has been. It's the inner path of transformation. I was gonna have so much fun with this. I, it's not a good venue for it quite yet, but you guys remember these things from the like Discovery Store when you like stare at it and like a T-Rex comes flying out at you? It's, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like a 3D thing. So this is like a mess of dumbbells and, and a bunch of food and everything. Everyone thinks it's a bunch of diet and exercise. This is what the world sees. And they're looking for the solution over here. It's like, oh, it's the, it's the zone diet. Oh, no, no, it's, it's keto. Oh, it's, it's a P90X. Oh, no, no, it's insanity. It's a, no. If you actually adjust your eyes, you'll see what it is. I know it's, it's going to be hard to see it here, but I don't know. If, if anyone's a master at this, maybe, maybe you can see what this is. But if you adjust your eyes, here's the thing. They all work. There's an inner path. And that inner path, do you see it? The inner path has always been there all along. Every single one of those programs works. But the thing is, if you adjust your focus and you look past the programs to what the real path is, you'll actually see this. It's those steps, promise after promise, to loving yourself. That's what it is. That's how people transform. That's how lives change forever. And when you learn that, you can never go back. Because if you ever start to fall off, or you, 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 you've fallen off and you're like, oh man, you can always trace it back to a single broken promise when it started. You can trace every single backslide back to a single broken promise. Try it also, on your own time. It's really wild. Anyone here who's lost weight and gained it back, you can trace it back to a time when you're, you had non-negotiables as you, as you lost the weight, and then there's one day when those non-negotiables were compromised. You can trace it always back to one broken promise. But this is, the, this is what transformation looks like. So what now? Well, we start where you are. Figure out what is good for you. What is your average amount of steps every day? How would you want, like to increase them? What are you capable of doing? Look at what you did last year. Things might have changed. You might be busy or you might be less busy. You might have some time on your hands and now you know you can do more. Aim for that 85% rule. Two. Shift your focus to promise keeping. We just covered all that. And then finally, let's go. Keep your promises. And that's all I got for you. So, for, I went 15 over. Sorry, Allie, but. There's plenty to cover. Thank you so <laughs> Thank you. much. Chris. Thank you guys so much. You got this. Let's go. Y'all are going to crush it. And now, now you guys know the secret. Oh. We have a little gift for Thank you guys. You. From the city of Glendale, from one of our local vendors, Coyote Odie. They are made with oats. So yes, I realize I'm giving cookies to Chris Powell. <laughs> but I also know that he has a staff and a family, and they're made with oats and fresh whole food ingredients, which thank I you. Like, so. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. you guys. Thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. You got this. Thank you and so much. I forgot. I, I owe you a picture. I didn't freeze after move one million for the picture. Um, well, they're pulling up my slides. We can do that oh. really quick. Okay, so fantastic. If anybody wants to, last year we did a giant selfie. So if you guys want to just like stand up and do, I'll oh, yeah. grab that for you. We'll skip that. So if oh, yeah, you want to grab your phone, stand up. We'll just do a quick power pose or a quick uh, muscle <laughs> pose. There we go.
and we want to do it this way? Or, yeah, or how do you want to do it? That way we can get everybody. Let's do that. Okay, fantastic. That. You want to jump in here? All right. I don't want to take up everybody. Oh, here we go. All right. Okay. Get those flexes up. Let's here we see go. it, guys. All right, All right, yeah. Okay, I will send this to you and then you can send it out to everybody. All right. Okay, fantastic. Okay, Perfect. cool. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you Perfect. so much. And as a fellow exercise scientist, I just have to say you had me at PubMed. <laughs> right. But that was amazing. That was so amazing. Thanks. So this is definitely a tough act to follow. So let's talk a little bit about the ins and the outs of Walker Tracker. And if I can make the clicker work. There we go. So where we're going this year is kindness around the globe. So we could all use a little bit of kindness, right? So the purpose of this challenge is to just inspire that spirit of kindness within all of us. And at each of the destinations that you unlock along the way around the world, we'll find out how people treat each other with kindness. So we can track steps and activities in the Walker Tracker platform. You should all have your own URL. So Glendale, we're Glendale AZ walkertracker.com and then each organization has its own URL. It is open to everyone, so you can have a friend or a family member join you. Get your coworkers, all employees, everybody who's listening to this, you can jump on to your own Walker Tracker and get going with that. So our goal is 7,000 steps a day, and again, like Chris said, add that 10 to 15% and we can do something amazing together. We've done this competition for six years, so a lot of the organizations have been along the ride the whole time. We had nine groups last year, as you already heard. We did a billion steps, and um, this year, 10 groups have begun the journey, and we'll see where we end up. You also have the option to track on a mobile device or on um, also the website. So there's two leaderboards, so this is a little bit of confusion in the beginning, but now that we've started, hopefully you see it on your apps and on the website. But you'll see uh, challenge versus challenge or the program versus program where you'll see your organization versus the other organization. So this was uh, last night, Buckeye was in the lead. Um, they were in the lead still this morning. So, But we're all moving up on them and we're all really close right now, so it is anybody's game. So you'll see that leaderboard, and then you'll also see the individual leaderboard where it's just your organization, so it's you versus everybody else. And why do we get together and do this? For a trophy, of course. <laughs> so the Golden Shoe Trophy right now sits in Buckeye, but you can see who's won it in the past, Chandler, Surprise, and the city of Scottsdale. So Glendale, let's bring that sucker home. We've got one here. <laughs> I want my other shoe back. <laughs> All right, so just a quick overview. Um, these are some screenshots of the app. On that home screen is where you can see your steps. And then if you scroll down, there's a quick little button so you can connect a device if you want to, or you can just um, track your own activity um, by hitting the little button towards the bottom there. So all the different devices that connect, again, I won't go through all of it, but it's pretty simple. You go to the settings, to the little setting wheel, and you can connect your device. And it connects to a lot. And if you need help, check out Walker Tracker. You can contact your program administrator, but support at walkertracker.com is also amazing. And they're probably going to be faster than us because there's only one of me and there's a bunch of them. So, and then um, it's got features on it so you can comment. So this is part that gets us connected socially. So the comments you see are just going to be the comments for your own group, but you can um, connect, you can make comments, you guys can support each other, you can see each other's steps, so please do that and encourage. You can post photos if you go on a hike or you go do something fun, and you just never know who you're going to inspire. So it's got that option in it too. There's also an option to create a group. So here at Glendale, um, we've done things by our department team, so we already have those big teams set up. You can join your department team, or you can start your own team as well. So, And again, every organization kind of has their own way that they do that. And then you can see, as I mentioned, the different challenge views, and then when you get to those destinations, it will um, tell you a little bit about that destination. And then there's also, also wellness tips, so we always like those too, right? Um, so the motivation is for you, so you can see where you're at with your steps, 
you can see where our organization is at with steps and then you can see where all the other groups are too so and really it is it is just a matter of syncing those steps on a regular basis and just keeping going and just kind of keeping that promise to yourself and then we've got some outside activities so we've got Tempe Elementary School District in the house and they've got a 5k coming up so if you live near Tempe um, be sure to check that event out and everyone is welcome to join that and then of course we have one here in Glendale so we'll be up at our Foothills Recreation and Aquatic Center it is on the 24th of February but if you register by the 24th of January you get a guaranteed a t-shirt we'll try to have t-shirts for everyone but we can guarantee that t-shirt um, if you register early so and for our city of Glendale again that's open to friends family the community anyone Team Buckeye came out last year, so Buckeye, we're gonna be watching for you guys. So I hope you guys just get moving and get connected um, no matter where you are in the Valley. And then for those of you that need attendance points, City of Glendale, we got you guys covered. Um, but for the organization that need attendance points, you can scan the QR code, or if you're really good, um, you can type that in to get your attendance points for those of you that are joining on the live stream and again thank you so much for you guys joining on the live stream too so just a couple quick reminders so again you can track either way whatever you're comfortable with sync your device track on the mobile device or on the app and I like to tell our folks because we have another app too so we have the walker tracker and we have the virgin pulse so just load both those apps on your phone just tap the app get those steps to sync in there um, count your activity minutes if you're doing something so if you're doing swimming for example or weightlifting or cycling you don't always got a lot of steps for that so you can put in those extra minutes of activity as well and like Chris said let's all set a goal set a goal and get an ap accountability partner because together it's just so much easier so look at your neighbor if you don't have a partner yet um, before we leave here get to know somebody and we're all in this challenge together and together we can do something really amazing you guys so believe in yourselves keep those promises and just know like Chris said I love that he talked about neat and all that good stuff because all movement matters all of it so again take those walking breaks get up and move you can do it so good luck everybody let's go get it um, we are going to take just a couple quick questions and then we're going to, Glendale, you guys are going to hang out here, but then the groups um, that are um, remote, so I know Town of Gilbert has a group, I know Chandler has a group, so you guys are going to stay in your groups, but we're going to end the broadcast for everybody but Glendale in just a minute. So did we get any questions coming in on the live stream? Any check in? Okay, so that's good. No questions. So I'm surprised there's no trash talk on the live stream, but... <laughs> The famous trash talker has retired, so Carrie from Goodyear, we, we're missing your trash talk right now. All right, so thank you to all the organizations that tuned in. Glendale, hold tight. I got a little bit of Glendale specific, but let's give one more big round of applause to Chris Powell. And again, if anybody missed attendance points. All right, City of Glendale, this is just for you. So thank you for hanging in there. And I just want to clarify because we do have two programs. Um, so we've got the Walker Tracker. It's its own app. So that glendaleaz.walkertracker.com. And then we've got Virgin Pulse. So if you forget to track on Virgin Pulse, that's okay. We got you covered. You're, 